Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and the Indubitable. Uh, Tim Alexander Lord Sterling is here with his Europe Business blog, and you've been at culling through the news, I'm sure. The uh, geopolitical military strategic wheels are churning in your head, and sparks are flying, indicating we're heading toward some very unpleasant things that are going to happen in the near future. What's happening, Tim? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all, uh, unless you consider World War III to be something, uh, a potential note. Uh, and by the way, this is not just like a conspiracy theory, just like, you know, as I mentioned repeatedly, and I want to repeat it in this third hour, uh, we had some very good reports, and I mentioned my thesis and analysis with John Moore's reports from very good sources, because he's a good researcher, that there were multiple sources that there was going to be the near passage of the Nemesis Dwarf Star, the Class Three Dwarf Star, that would be coming into our near solar system causing a major pole shift of the Earth. I found no evidence to support this, which means the government did a PSYOP on the alternative media to release this information, because I have absolutely no confirmation of it, but the real issues that are coming is there's a plan by Obama now to circumvent uh, the previous attempts to pass SIPA and, PIPA, SOPA and PIPA bills to control the Internet. He's supplied armaments, which is public news, to the Syrian Free Army, which are terrorists, Al-Qaeda, etc. We have him uh, promising, along with Ben Bernanke, billions and trillions of dollars to the Europeans to bail them out, which means a bank holiday is coming in America. We're in the midst of a famine, and they're guaranteeing we're going to soon have a Middle Eastern, very ugly war, which will close well, out the Well, the neocoms are going crazy in this country today. I watched uh, Fox, uh, which is, of course, a good way to get your daily neocom injection. And uh, a, a, a supposedly an American intelligence finding that has been leaked in Israel says that the Iranians are now very close to achieving uh, atomic weaponry. And, of course, we have to go and kill uh, the Iranians for Israel or let the Israelis go and kill them. And, of course, we have to be there to back them up. Tim, I, um, I, I propose a Every week the there's a different, uh, a, a different cause of Bella, a different reason for us to go to war with Iran and our Syria uh, and what what's happening is the the um, propaganda matrix the mainstream news media in cooperation with the globalist and the extreme neocon, uh, the neocon, extreme neocons and uh, Netanyahu Zionists are driving us towards a, a, a general uh, war, a regional war in the Middle East which will become the third world war we don't now, even about need three that. weeks ago because we don't even uh, need we had, we, if we, uh, if we I, want to verify, Tim, if we want to verify that the Iranians now or in the future cannot make a nuclear weapon, we could simply notify Ahmadinejad and the Bullis that we're going to fly in a division with our, new, with our advanced uh, special forces and we're coming in, quote, in peace, that we're going to verify they can and we're going to leave forces in place so that they can't. Number two, we can start calling out these weapons and also help remove the Syrian Free Army that are killing soldiers and civilians inside with Shabiba inside Syria to collaborate with... Uh, and with targeting Russia. Christians. And targeting Christians. With our tax dollars. We, we could actually have our, Christians our military... Because they're Christians, right. killing them right. uh, with our tax dollars right. in our we, name. We, we could also simply go in there and verify the Russian movement of VX and RDX nerve uh, and, and, and high explosive weapons and simply uh, contain those and remove them properly that were placed there by the uh, after the fall of Iraq. Uh, those are really simple. You, don't, you can collaborate well, with the well, Saudi Dr. Bell, three weeks ago, we had had a, a, the, uh, an entire week of buildup towards uh, a reason for war. The propaganda matrix uh, and uh, Hillary Clinton uh, got off a broomstick and made an announcement, uh, Obama, yeah, no, right. the President of Israel, the Prime Minister of Israel, the Foreign Minister of Israel, the Defense Minister of Israel, they were all threatening that uh, if these chemical warheads that the Syrians have in vast quantities, if they were to start to move them around, if they were to start to, to transfer them to Hasbala, or uh, if, the, if Assad would or fall, or Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, that Israel would have to strike. The United States would have to strike. We'd have to go in. And then all of a sudden, uh, one morning about three weeks ago, the so-called rebels, which are all foreign-paid, foreign-led, foreign-equipped uh, mercenaries, uh, they made an announcement that Sy the Syrian forces, uh, they were certain, they approved it, they had uh, absolute solid intelligence that the Syrian forces were transporting their chemical warheads to air bases near Israel and were loading them on the planes and about to attack Israel with chemical warheads. So immediately the head of the uh, 
uh, Political and Security Department of the Israeli Defense Ministry, this is a senior civil servant in the Israeli Defense Ministry, came out and said, no, that's not true. Within the IR, the chief of staff of the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, the, the top general in Israel, came out and said, it is an outright lie. We are watching things very carefully. Assad has absolute control over his unconventional forces. Right. Uh, there's no reason to panic. We are not going to attack the uh, Syrians. And that, if we would, that would bring Iran in, and we don't want that. And uh, basically, that was a mutiny. But the mainstream media has not reported it that way. That was a mutiny by the top generals and civilians in the uh, the Israeli Defense Ministry, they said no. They said no to all the civilian leadership in the Netanyahu government. We're not going to sacrifice Israel for your craziness. And I said at the time that Netanyahu and the globalists would do a workaround, and they've been in the process of doing that. A couple times now, Netanyahu has come out and said, oh, uh, the generals are afraid they'll be blamed if we go to war, that if, if it won't turn out right. He said, I accept all blame uh, myself. I All blame can go on my shoulders. Well, you know, uh, that's all fine, but if, if your people were all dead, uh, those are hollow words. Yeah, I don't buy it. If you look strategically, and you've done a very good analysis, Israel can't survive if they start any kind of conflict. If, no. Here's what I propose, and again, I don't know if the government are listening and they're making reports. The first thing is America's strong enough that if we went to NATO and the United Nations and said, look, we want to bring an international consortium with the collaboration of the Syrian government to remove the Syrian Free Army. Number one. Number two, we're going to contain the so-called short-range weapons also that are, could be potentially aimed there in southern Lebanon as well as Syria. And number three, we're going to fly in an expeditionary force to support the nuclear uh, a scientists that can actually go in and make sure that we are permanently embedded to make sure that the, that the Iranians never develop a nuclear weapon. We do not want any Muslim nations with nuclear weapons. And by the way, the same... Well, we already have it, Pakistan. Yeah, we also but, have Pakistan. And, and the Saudis have nukes. The Saudis have nukes, too. That's the point. Now, the fact is, what we're doing is opening up the can of worms that there's multiple nations with nukes, or potential nukes, including dirty bombs. And the real issue is a poor man's nuke is bioweapons that were transferred after the fall of the Soviet Union that we've gone over numerous times. So if we start a war, we're not going to finish it. Yeah. And, and, and kind of switching gears here, but this is definitely related. Last week we spoke on the swine flu outbreak yes, in that's, Indiana, that's really where I live, is kind of the epicenter of this. Uh, at Ohio, that time Indiana. we spoke, there were four counties reporting possible swine flu cases. The next day it climbed to six counties. Now these counties were, were in various parts of Indiana. They weren't uh, touching on one another. So you, you cases have, now. Since, we now have 18 counties, 100 113 confirmed cases of uh, swine flu in As Indiana, of an hour ago, Ohio, now. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's even yeah. in uh, Hawaii on the island of Maui. So what we we now have is a the beginnings of a pandemic of swine flu that can be transmitted and has been transmitted successfully from human to human and even humans back to the, to swine. Now. When I interviewed uh, several people, uh, yeah, officials in Indiana, uh, and, and tried to pin them down, I said, okay, so you've got outbreaks in four counties and you have multiple outbreaks in your county. What are you doing specifically that you don't normally do? And uh, after a little bit of gobbledygook, I said, so in other words, you're not doing anything. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. Okay, tell me specifically. What are you doing the deer you don't normally do? Uh, 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 uh. Well, we're following protocol. Well, when you follow protocol... You know, it's a four-day uh, four lag, and basically what protocol is, is physicians are supposed to report to the Indiana Department of Health or whatever, the, the Ohio Department of Health, whatever, uh, if they have flu cases. And the genie's out of the bottle is what you're saying. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, we're up the creek without yeah, a paddle if, if we get hit with bio war. Welcome back, and uh, let's get into some of the things in the weather changes. I, I think we'll get back to the military in a minute, but uh, the weather changes are pretty extreme, and we've had a heat wave here that struck California, and I'm only seven miles from the coast. We've had 
record temperatures, the warmest July in American history, the warmest seven months in American history, worldwide climate shift and major famine worldwide. Uh, we're heading toward a war in the Middle East and collapse of the economy in Europe. And if anybody thinks we're conspiracy theorists, they have a problem that requires a surgical procedure, and I want you to guess what it is. <laughs> Something about uh, it's, a, it's called a, a craniorectal brain and a rectum. I, it's I'm called a craniorectal uh, extraction procedure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, if you if you want to cool off, you might consider going to South Africa because all of South Africa had uh, snow yesterday. Uh, almost unbelievable, uh, but uh, it snowed all across South Africa. Now, of course, it's winter down there, but they don't get snow. Uh, people were running out of uh, the buildings and dancing in the snow, and, I mean, it was just unbelievable. Uh, also, of course, in, in places in Alaska, they've had the coldest summer in recorded history there. Uh, South Korea has had a heat wave, and they've, it's killed. Uh, just now, this is just one aspect of the heat wave in South Korea. It's killed 780,000 chickens uh, because they, you know, raise vast amounts of chickens to feed their people, and the heat is so intense, it's killing the chickens in the uh, the buildings. Um, the United States has suffered the hottest July since records were kept beginning back in 1895. Um, there's even uh, some concerns uh, with the drought that the Mississippi may begin to run dry. Now, I, and I want to pat ourselves on the back. Uh, John Moore, yourself, and me, uh, we broke the story that Dr. Zakari uh, at uh, Prescott Institute in By the way, he worked in he worked with NOAA here in North America and NASA as well. So it's not just Dr. Zagari and the Frescati. Right. Uh, he was the, basically the whistleblower, and he's afraid to come back on air, even though I've communicated with him in the last four months, uh, because he knows that the loop currency to basically uh, Skype messaged me just four months ago that it's not reconstituted. In fact, no. there's still a leakage at the bottom of the Gulf, and what they're doing is still pouring thousands of gallons of Corex at 9500 which is neurotoxic distillate that, that causes genetic damage uh, at the bottom of the uh, of the Gulf and, and they're spending money telling people to come to the Gulf and vacation and the seafood there is just great right and uh, if you believe that I have a bridge they had, mobile, to you. they had mobile incinerators taking sea life and burning it at sea so the people wouldn't see it and they're trying to cover it up by putting the cracks it not on the surface of the uh, waters when the oil comes up but literally separating the distillate so that the tar-like uh, gelatin-like Vaseline consistency oil giant slug stays at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico a mile down right. so nobody and, knows and, it and, and the rest it of it dissolves and disappears. allowed it to go to the surface. There are giant sea skimming uh, ships. Uh, there are three normally uh, kept in Europe that could have cleaned up the Gulf. Easy. But they, they knew what they were doing. They knew when they drilled there they were going to cause a disaster. That's why uh, Goldman Sachs dumped their BP stock and the insiders in the BP dumped their own stock a month before it happened. Now, it, it's a college physics level experiment when you uh, you take a big tub of cold water and you inject a colored stream of warm water into su uh, to study the surface dynamics and so forth and then you add just a tiny bit of oil and what it does it breaks down the, the flow and that's what's happened in the Gulf if you go to my site I, I keep a permanent link to NOAA uh, satellite uh, imaging data that the, the loop current is gone it's still gone in and since that happened, uh, it, the, the the loop current is a key part of this thermal highline circulatory system in the Atlantic Ocean, both North and South Atlantic Ocean. And it, it has many different names in different parts because over the centuries, people discovered this current. There's a Florida current, which comes normally out of the, uh, the, the Yucatan current, flows into the Gulf, makes a big loop. That's called the loop current. Then it flows out and goes past... Uh, Cuba and up the Florida coast, and it's called a Florida current, until it hits the outer banks of North Carolina, and then it shoots across the Atlantic, and that's called the jet or the Gulf Stream, and um, et cetera, et cetera. It makes a giant loop in the, the ocean. Now, that loop current, the Gulf of Mexico is an extremely warm body of water, and that loop current takes that thermal energy, that heat, and puts it in that river of warm water that goes across the cold North Atlantic, and it's cold even in summer. And by the way, if but it doesn't do that, it ends up and that affects 
the atmosphere for several miles above it, and it acts as a steering mechanism on the atmospheric jet stream. Right. And the reason that everything is all screwed up globally is because the jet stream is acting so weird, and it has for almost two years now. And it's because the loop current is not working. It's all that thermal energy is not there, and, and that has affected everything. And that's why we're literally going to be in absolute chaos because the, the supply of grains, we've lost our, most of our corn crop in America. Our soybean crop is going to be dramatically less. And this is happening in southern Europe. It's happening in parts of Russia, et cetera, et cetera. So part of what's started the Arab Spring was the fact that food prices had risen, risen so much. That's a, and by the way, that happened because of the lack of putting back in the Glass-Steagall bill. It was the, uh, it was the speculation on trillions of, of dollars of money created out of thin air that were now being pushed out of the banking market and credit for companies and businesses put into speculation on commodities which drove out the price of food so Libya and Tunisia and these other countries couldn't afford to eat and the same in Egypt. That's well, what really yes, drove but they'll it. be speculating, but there's even more things actually driving it, and that is that it's there's the a lot less food being grown well, now because of the drought, because of, of the, the extreme conditions, not just in America, the breadbasket of the world, but also in, in Russia and, and, and Southern Europe and so forth. And uh, well, even South America's had some fairly bad crops there in their winter now, but in, in, in the last growing season. So you've got more people all the time, but because of the uh, because of this little game they played with the environment, uh, we're going to have we're, a lot of people aren't going to have enough eat, to eat. And if you thought the Arab Spring was uh, a fun and games, just watch. Well, the thing is that they went and recessed the government when they should have been staying in session because Obama wants to do this because I think they want he gave a green light to Israel to do to start a preemptive attack on Syria and Iran. And he wanted the Congress to be, out, to be out of session to September 10th. By the way, that's right. The day before 9-11, 11-11, remember, 11 years after 9-11 is coming no up. Yeah. We're, we're moving to a very dangerous time. And uh, I think if Obama even thinks that there's any way possibly he could lose this election in a second term for his communist and, and, and Sunni Muslim agenda, he will do anything, including allowing the Israelis to preempt and start a regional nuclear war. He'll do anything to make sure that he can maintain his power. And then because the other freak, Romney, I call the lesser of the two freaks, the both freaks, uh, depending on who he announces is going to be the vice president, will determine whether he gets elected. If he puts someone like Ryan in, who's a very conservative person in terms of austerity fascism, they'll try to shove down our throats that fascism and austerity will be the watchwords to bring us back to a sense well, of normality. Paul, Paul Ryan uh, is Jewish, and, and uh, Romney is... Um, uh, um, he's not Christian. Uh, he's uh, a Mormon. Right. So you would have two uh, people on the tickets who are, aren't Christian, and I don't, I don't believe that will fly. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Back in a moment. You know, what's going on is a lot of uh, businesses are finding it really hard to get credit. Uh, we're seeing incre contracting credit, increasing debt, and now, uh, of and course... And the banks are sitting on untold billions of dollars. And those billions of dollars, by the way, are circulating back and forth between the Treasury and the uh, Federal Reserve, and also speculation internationally. If they erected Glass-Steagall, they wouldn't be able to use the speculative funds to drive the of cost course. of all commodities. Well, they're, they're, we are seeing America being systematically destroyed. Uh, it's not an accident. It's deliberate. Uh, they're not only wiping out the middle class and upper middle class, they're now working on the lower upper class. I know a fellow who owns a large uh, bakery. Uh, you know, he, they sell bread all over several counties, and it's, it's a major bread company. And they've been assessed like 800000 for scrubbers for their gas ovens for baking bread by the EPA. Now, you know, we've been baking bread for how many thousands of years on this planet and you have to spend 800000 for a scrubber for a bread oven? I don't think so. 
my late father was a was in the laundry and dry cleaning business, and he's been dead for years. But uh, before he died, and, and after he got out of business, we put the uh, his factory, his his uh, dry cleaning factory, and laundry building in an LLC. But we kept the insurance, and uh, fortunately, it had a writer on there. Uh, they, we've been assessed like a million dollars for environmental cleanup because it had been a dry cleaning uh, factory. And we get bills every couple months from the state of Indiana. Bureaucrats in the state talking to other state bureaucrats about this issue. And there is no issue. There hasn't been a, a dry cleaning place there for decades. Um, talking about this issue. And then they bill you thousands of dollars uh, and my mother is like 92 years old, and they're billing her thousands of dollars. And the insurance doesn't pick this part up for one bureaucrat talking to another bureaucrat for hours, supposedly on this issue. In other words, all it is is, is, is legalized uh, theft. Right. And this is what is happening all over America. And this is why small businessmen and, and people who are um, in manufacturing and, and any kind of production or any kind of business, they're just so fed up because their own government is destroying them. And it's not by accident. This is deliberate. Back when I was going to set up the fourth uh, national evening uh, television news broadcast, and I was dealing with investment bankers. It was a dot-com area. And at that time, and it didn't apply to me because we were going to have a lot of overseas uh, studios and so forth anyway, but uh, if you were setting up a business, all the uh, New York uh, investment banking firms wanted to know how soon you were going to outsource the production uh, overseas. That was part of the business plan you had to have. This is not an accident. It's not an accident. We've lost 56,000 large factories in less than a decade now in America and more and more every month because they're deliberately destroying us. And the people at the top that are allowing this to happen are guilty of economic treason against the people of America. And and we have the worst freaks, and, and Gerald Clementi is right. Uh, he calls the uh, politicians uh, freaks. And he says, you know, America Americans argue among themselves why their freak is better than the other freak, and they'll get angry if you call their freak a freak, and they'll actually fight and die to defend their freaks. And, uh, you know, uh, we do have freaks. Obama's a freak. Romney's a freak. These guys are absolute jerks. And and the people that are sitting in our Senate and our, our, and our House of Representatives are the worst scum that we've ever had. I mean, we, we, politics is crooked, and we've had a long tradition of crooked politicians. Right. But Nothing as bad as these clowns. Well, what's happening now is that the district of criminals. Well, the the first thing I think is most horrendous that we should probably open up this can of worms is, with all the evidence uh, against Obama, uh, including his illegal wars against Libya and Tunisia, the birth certificate issues, the issues of the illegal use of a social security card from Connecticut he never uh, had access to legally. Uh, There's so many issues with Obama. He should have been impeached, but Bonner's not going to do anything. We don't see the Congress and the Senate doing their job. They actually went into recess when they actually had a vote initially to say, no, they're not going to go into recess, yet we're heading toward a war, we're heading toward disaster in America, and yet these guys decided it's time to go off and play with the rubber ducky and well, go and it's, have a it's summer election break. election time. They want to go back and uh, shake hands and kiss babies and, and, and lie uh, out of both sides of their mouth so they can get back, go back to, to D.C., the District of Criminals, and uh, everybody, well, oh, Congressman, oh, Senator, oh, so, you know, I mean, they're like, uh, they're, they're petty lords. Uh, they're like, uh, you know, in the old feudal days, they're, uh, they're barons and everybody has to cut towel to them. And uh, th- these guys are freaks. They are, are, they would sell their own mother for enough money. And they have literally sold us all down the river. Now, I'm 61 years old. I remember when America wasn't quite so rich in the 50s, but then we began to get, you know, quite well. We have the greatest landmass in terms of agriculture and natural resources and everything on the face of this earth that God has given us. And we have shipped most of our industrial manufacturing capacity to our enemies, the People's Republic of China, and to other third world countries. Why? 
Why is it that when you go into a shopping mall, there's not even 5% of everything in the entire shopping mall made in America, maybe 2% if yeah, you're I know lucky? My, but my wife now, decided to get an extra. On your, on your yeah. back, the shoes on your feet, from your underwear, your socks, to your, your shirt, your pants, everything. Where's it made? Uh, almost certainly it's not made in the United States. Why yeah, not? But by the way, if you, if you decided to cancel all uh, goods and toys and everything coming from China, you'd have to cancel Christmas. <laughs> yeah. But but the following Christmas might be a whole lot better because right, we yeah. all might be working. Yeah, yeah. You they, cannot have 315 million people frying hamburgers for one another at Mickey D's and have a. a well, have no. A you, what, what, they, maybe what they want to do is make us all members of some form of Spitznoss police and create this artificial economy where everybody has basically what I call the blue, the long blue glove and the anatomically now extended index finger of death, <laughs> yeah. uh, so that they can they can. And the body oh, Dr. Humor were there. <laughs> yeah, they can have, they can have a little we, bit of they can have. Doctor Bill, we have over a hundred million Americans on welfare. Right. Well, you know, this is why we have Obama saying, you know, I was watching on w, uh, MSNBC and I couldn't believe it. Do you want a guy? The guy was uh, saying on there. Unfortunately, again, this is not racist. He was black, saying how you want a guy that's going to stick out for blacks. Obama's not stuck out for black people. Black people should oh. be pissed. They should look Believe at this guy me, and say, I, that. I have black friends and then and, they and, and be they're pissed. disgusted with the man. Well, look, the unemployment rate has risen for blacks faster than it has for whites. It's risen for the entire population. If you're, you're more likely to have an abortion, seven times more likely if you're black. You're more likely to be dispossessed of your property. You're more likely to, if, if you're caught with, for example, with marijuana or any other drugs, to be abused. This is, by the way, not gotten better. It's gotten worse. And also... Obama doesn't care. Obama's surrounded by a bunch of gunmen. Obama lives in the White House. Yeah. He flies on his own 747. Right, he but also he takes more vacations than anybody else. And, and uh, again, the same with his jet-setting wives. All they do is they just take more and more vacations and try to smirk at us and say, we're just celebrities. We just want to give you the vision of what you could have. <laughs> okay. yes, this, is not, this is not spreading we, a, This is not trickle-down. You know, There's what, no trickle-down happening. What's going to happen if we can no longer afford to feed people on food stamps and well, if we can't afford to pay for their for their dumpy apartments uh you know if you're literally facing starvation why not grab a gun well here's what i expect to happen probably sometime after the election because i think they're going to hold everything off until after if they can although they may not stop all of it including a preemptive attack by israel but here's what i should say is most likely Let's say we, at the current rate, Romney looks like he's just not moving properly politically to win. So let's say we get another term of Obama. What's likely to happen is an attack on Iran sometime next year. We're likely to see a collapse of the dollar with a bank holiday. And we're going to see 300 to $500 oil because the Strait of Hormuz is closed. That's where I think we're going. back and uh, yeah, when we're laying out all these facts to people that you know one of the things that I find most uh, amazing is people think that or don't think uh, there's three class groups of people basically those who ask questions and want to have the answer those who ask questions and don't want you to tell them the truth and those who don't want you to ask questions at all well you know uh, the thing is when World War three smacks you in the face when starvation when the four horsemen the apocalypse uh, 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 pestilence, famine, uh, war, and death smack you in the face. You know, uh, maybe you don't well, want to hear it. Maybe you don't want to know about it. But do, it too late, Charlie. Say, it's, it's here. It too, a real opt optimist. Do we want an, a real America? Again, there's time. I, I want America to be Nineveh. I am not here to be a Jonah and curse America. I'm here to say, America... If you change your heart, if you change your spirit, is it just like it says in Second Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name will repent and you know, fall down before the Most High God and cry out and say, we repent with the blood of Jesus covering us, that we as a nation have done great evil. We promoted abortion, we promoted the uh, Muslim Brotherhood and hanging, as you said on the break, a little five-year-old boy after they slayed his family, they hung him up. And these are the bastards that we are 
pay yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah, there's, uh, there's stories. I have one out yesterday and in pictures. Uh, the foreign mercenaries that our tax dollars are helping to equip, organize, and so forth in Syria, they slaughtered a bunch of people, including this entire family. And there was a little boy, and I, I you, from the picture of him, I'd say he might be five years old. They hung him in public. Now, a five-year-old little boy. I'm sorry, what kind of sick, satanic SOB, and I'm on the air, so I have to watch what I say, but what kind of sick so-and-so would do something like that? Well, you can see and my point where... dollars are supporting this America? If we had a real president that was a real Christian and real support of Israel, because I stepped off the territory in 1992 and put my foot down in Israel, I heard in the spirit, I'm standing on American soil. We cannot let Israel fall. We cannot let it be partitioned, as it says in Genesis. You cannot partition the state of Israel. We cannot tolerate the cult of Islam, as we talked about with IQ al Razuli, literally calling in from the UK. And by the way, no callback number because his uh, he has to change locations continuously because Islam has his number and wants to kill him. People need to understand that what's going on. This is not a rehearsal, and there's no room here for people to say, you know. Get your spit up right from the base of your throat. Try to see if you can spit on us intellectually and otherwise. You need a wake-up call right now to realize that we're not doing this because we're cowards. We have the backbone, we have the questions, and we have the, the plan to survive and thrive, which means if people in America come together, if we elect a proper president, when they have, not, not either one of these freaks, by the way, neither one should be president, but absolutely not Obama. I mean, if we... Uh, they're, 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 they're both monsters. They're, they're both monsters. They're, they're both, uh, they, they, they turn somersaults uh, trying to prove to the worst extremists in Israel that uh, they'll do whatever they want. Well, the problem uh, is, you see, we're not going to... Israel's a tiny country the size of Wales, maybe. We're, we're, okay. we're not going to do a rational policy where we say, okay, we're going to bring an American division. We'll call up... Let, 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 here's me. I'm going to ring. I'm going to pretend I'm ringing uh, Assad and I'm the president. Uh, Mr. Assad, I realize we've made some bad strategic errors. We've supported of the Muslim Brotherhood to come in and shoot your people and shoot your military. Uh, we are uh, repenting of that. We realize that you have alliances with a Christian majority in the nation and with the, the senior Sunnis, except for a small minority that have gone to the other side of the Syrian Free Army. The Syrian Free Army are basically Muslim functionaries of the global least bankers. We realize we're not going to collaborate with them anymore to kill your people. What we want to do is bring in he an extra dirty... Of a heart attack right we, there. We, we would, we would want, <laughs> what we would do is we want to repent to number one. We want to come in and we will bring in expeditionary forces to help the Russians to clean up the Syrian Free Army and to execute these people summarily for military, through military justice courts. Number two, we want to locate the weapons that were moved by, out of Iraq into your country by Russia that are stored there to make certain they're safe and secure and that they're not used as weapons against Israel or the nations because you know Israel is trigger happy and wants to destroy Damascus and every Islamic city within 7,000 miles. We want to assure you that we are not trying to take over your country or force a form of government that you do not want to accept because you managed to keep an alliance between disparate parties. We also realize that, that the takeover of your country is a backdoor to an attack on Iran, and Iran is a strong ally that will not tolerate this and will target long-range weapons, including biological weapons, on Europe. We want to avoid but World War. But all that makes sense. Right. All that is rational. Right. All that is from a Christian perspective. And right, but also a spectrum of, of strengths. We come in there with our military, his guns blazing to say, we're not coming in here to attack your people or bomb your cities. I had a standing vision last Sunday that was one of the most horrifying things I've ever experienced in my life. And at 60 years of age, I thought I was dying. I stood in my pool for 20 minutes. I had a standing vision of fuel air bombs sucking people's lungs through their throat, through, out their mouth. I literally felt death all around me. I thought clouds, people screaming for their relatives and couldn't find them, little pieces of children and, and adults blown to bits everywhere. And I was standing by a university you know, military base in Tehran, in downtown Tehran, and literally fuel air bombs being dropped and everything just kind of dying. And then all of a sudden, clouds of dust everywhere in silence after these bombs are so loud, you can't even describe the, how loud they are. 
I mean, literally will suck your lungs out of your mouth. Right. Uh, they're called, the, now, the Soviets used to call now, them. This is not like a little experience like, oh, you're standing off and you see it. No, I experienced it physically. I experienced the, the horror and pain of what they're going to go through. And I can tell you that we are the perpetrators. And if you think that's bad, what's going to happen to them? As it says in the Bible, I'm against you, oh God, against you, uh, America, as I said in the first chapter of the small scroll. We will get a double portion. Every U.S. city will be targeted with multiple thermonuclear, scalar, and biological weapons. There will not be a blade of grass stand in America, or not a human being above ground will survive well, we what's coming. As, we as people, as Americans and Christians, have to wake up because we're allowing a very small clique of very evil people to drive us to hell. Well, no, no, that they're going to enrage people that could be our allies. Our country, our infrastructure, to take away our freedoms and to take away virtually our entire lives now we, in a third world war. And why? Why don't we have the guts to stand up to these clowns? Right. We could also disarm. Says and Jerry Clinton, he said, they're they're nothing but a bunch of damn freaks. Right. We could also allow people to get away from the cult of Islam. If we supported the Isl Iranian citizens, we went down and took Mossadegh out and the and the secularizing influence in Islam, and we replaced. With the, with the, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, Shah of Iran, and then later we actually supported and brought in the Ayatollah Khomeini, which we and the CIA supported. We support this disaster because we love the dialectics of war and destruction because it allows us to, to disarm and to balkanize our enemy so we can maintain prestige. It's profit to the global banking cartel families. Yeah, war is the biggest generator of deficit spending. And deficit spending is profit because they create money out right. of thin air and loan it to governments like our own. Well, listen, and that's why you have wars. That and they're Satanists and Satan it loves the blood orgy, well, the hate, I, I'm the gonna make destruction a, of war. He's I, a murderer from the beginning, as Christ said. I want to make a statement that I think is the uh, is very significant, and I'm not going to put a date on it. But I believe when the when the when the uh, class three dwarf star, the class three red dwarf star, we call the Passover star entered into the space which which Moses know because he was taught by the high priests of ancient Egypt he was supposed to be the next pharaoh even though he was adopted because he's biologically superior to the real biological son of the pharaoh who was inbred they were very very inbred back then that Moses knew about these things when God told him that it was time to go to the pharaoh uh, of Egypt after 40 years in the, in the desert of Midian which is basically between Mecca and Medina and Saudi Arabia that uh, that same object is returning to our space and it will preempt the plans of the global elite. That's why they're freaked out and on their timeline, they're behind the time, just like the little white rabbit with his pocket watch. The global elite are saying, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. It's called Armageddon. They're late for destruction of the earth. They're late for control of the planet before their EMP weapons and solar mass ejections and destruction of the planet preempts their ability to, to call the population to avert and make certain that whatever rises from the ancient uh, ceremony of Pahanoka, the ancient ceremony of the phoenix, that, that, that they will not arise from their caves and their lairs in the ground, as it says in Revelation 6, like the ancient Eloi and the, uh, and the uh, you know, on the ground of the of H.G. Wells, the time machine, that they think they're going to come back out of these deep places in the earth decades or centuries from now, and the earth will be theirs. They're yeah, delusional. That's, that's a satanic uh, fantasy that uh, is, is created by Satan for psychopaths. Exactly. The fact is, there's only salvation in the Most High God, there's only peace in the Prince of Peace, and there's only good if you do the will of the Most High God, and anything other than God's will is by definition evil. Amen to that. And if we do not accede to that, we are heading down the pathway as quivering Americans thinking we are righteous and wonderful in the Olympic Games, and yet we are supporting leaders that are pushing us to the brink of destruction. Get right with God, and God bless. Absolutely. Back tomorrow with hour number one. Tomorrow, firing line. Preparedness Earth changes hour. You don't want to miss it.